Welcome to part two of Water Heater 101, where we will talk about the materials, valves, and connections you'll need to install a single mains pressure electric storage water heater. The work covered in this video isn't for beginners and should only be undertaken by a qualified and licensed professional. Let's get started. All materials and products you use in this work must have watermark certification and meet the requirements of the National Construction Code to ensure they are safe and fit for purpose. You need to select a hot water heater that has an anode that's compatible with the water supply. The manufacturer's instructions will have more information on the suitability of the anode. When you connect any service pipe to the inlet or outlet of a heater, you must use unions or similar couplings. Water service pipes installed above ground must be retained in position by brackets, clips or hangers. They must be supported and fixed at the intervals specified in the legislation. If a fitting is vulnerable to strain or torsion, it must be fastened against any movement. If the water heater doesn't have a temperature control valve, you can't use plastic pipes and fittings within one metre of the outlet. Plastic pipes and fittings must also not be used between the isolating valve and the inlet of the water heater. But if the water heater does have a temperature control valve, you can use plastic pipes and fittings immediately downstream of the temperature control valve. However, you must ensure the pipe material being used is fit for purpose and protected from direct sunlight. Plastic pipes must not be used to support isolation valves, non-return valves, and equipment used to connect water heaters. Now on to valves and valve installation. You must use valves that comply with the valve fitting requirements and set pressures specified in Section 5 of the standard. It is important to note that there are required pressure settings for expansion control valves and inlet pressure control valves, which are determined by the temperature and pressure relief settings supplied with the water heater. For example, if a water heater has been supplied with a temperature or pressure relief valve with a setting of 1400 kPa, and the installation is to include an expansion control valve, or ECV, the ECV must be set to 1200 kPa. If a cold water valve assembly is not supplied as a combined unit, you need to install it in a specific order. First, the isolating valve, then the line strainer, then the pressure control valve, non-return valve, and finally, the ECV if required. You need to make sure the isolating valve is readily accessible from the floor or finished surface level, and all valves must have unobstructed access for maintenance or replacement. The installation of an ECV on a hot water storage system must not only be installed in accordance with the standard, but also with the hot water heater manufacturer's instructions. This will ensure the integrity of the system. If you need more information about the installation requirements of an ECV, please contact your local government authority. Now we'll talk about water temperature. To avoid Legionella bacteria growth, the system must store water at a temperature of at least 60 degrees Celsius, unless the heater complies with AS3498, such as continuous flow water heaters with electronic temperature control. To prevent scalding, heated water installations must be fitted with a temperature control device which controls the delivery of heated water to all fixtures and appliances used primarily for personal hygiene purposes. The temperature at each required outlet must not exceed 45 degrees Celsius for the aged, sick, children or people with disabilities, particularly in healthcare and aged care buildings, schools, early childhood centres or similar buildings and facilities. In all other situations, the temperature must not exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Thanks for tuning in. You might want to check out part three, where we talk about energy efficiency and insulation requirements.